Smoking is obviously one of the most harmful things to your health. It increases the risk of heart disease, different cancers, and also ages you prematurely. However, this may not apply to nicotine specifically. In fact, some people think that nicotine has benefits on your cognition, and it may even protect against neurodegeneration that happens with age. Is it true, and if so, how? I'm going to look at the different effects of nicotine on the brain specifically, and see if there is any evidence for neurodegeneration. But first, a bit of important information about nicotine. Nicotine is an alkaloid found in certain plants, specifically nightshades like tobacco. Dry tobacco leaves are used to make tobacco products like cigarettes, mouth tobacco, pipes, etc. Nicotine is a highly addictive substance, which makes it hard to quit. However, nicotine patches and gums are often used for smoking cessation and to reduce the withdrawal symptoms. And smoking cessation is a net positive for your health. One of the interesting things about nicotine is that it has some benefits on cognition. Nicotine's effects are primarily mediated through nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are excitatory, which means they're fast acting, and they stimulate the release of other neurotransmitters like dopamine, acetylcholine, serotonin, glutamate, and norepinephrine. These neurotransmitters mediate the increased alertness, heightened mood, and mental acuity of nicotine. In neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor density is reduced. Dopamine is often thought to be the reward neurotransmitter that makes you addicted to things. But dopamine is actually a neurotransmitter of salience, which means that dopamine heightens the importance of certain stimuli in the environment that are beneficial for survival. You experience a rise in dopamine when having sex or eating something tasty as a way to make your brain pay attention to this. Because this is what your body deems to be important and it wants you to keep doing it, which is where the addictive potential comes from. However, dopamine is also important for various psychomotor functions, such as movement and balance, as well as memory and attention. Without dopamine, you wouldn't even have the motivation to get off the couch, which is why we need dopamine. Parkinson's disease is characterized by problems with motor control, such as shaking, resting tremble, rigid limbs, and slow movement. Parkinson's results from nerve cell death, specifically the death of dopamine-producing neurons in the brain's substantia niagara, as well as reduced dopaminergic function in the brain. Nicotine also increases acetylcholine levels, which is another neurotransmitter responsible for memory and attention. Cognitive impairment in Alzheimer's is associated with decreased cholinergic neurotransmission in the brain. Those mechanisms are all interesting and it might appear, mechanistically speaking, that nicotine might have benefits on cognitive function, especially in elderly people. But what about the clinical trials? A 2012 randomized controlled trial showed that 15 mg of transdermal nicotine per day for 6 months improved paragraph recall and delayed word recall accuracy in 34 people with mild cognitive impairment. They also saw improvements in attention and mental processing, but not in ratings of clinician-rated global impression. A 2014 randomized controlled trial also looked at the effects of nicotine on cognition in both older and younger adults. Nicotine had effect in the young volunteers and decreased performance on working memory and visual memory in the elderly. Nicotine had no effect in the young volunteers and decreased performance on working memory and visual memory in the elderly. Instead, the effect of nicotine was dependent on baseline performance in both the groups. The subjects with lower baseline performance saw benefits from nicotine, while those with higher baseline performance performed worse after nicotine administration. So based on this study, whether or not nicotine has cognitive benefits depends on your baseline cognitive status. If you have low baseline cognition, then the excitatory effects of nicotine and the attention increasing effects of nicotine increase your cognition. But if your cognition is already baseline high, then you don't see those benefits and it might have actually negative effects because it's too stimulating. However, the effects of nicotine on cognition may also be because of some bias. A 2020 systematic review of 32 randomized controlled trials saw that only 41% of them showed positive effects, 41% showed mixed results, and 18% showed no effect. 59% of the authors had also received prior tobacco industry funding, which makes the results less reliable. Overall, there might be some evidence that nicotine has benefits on cognition in people with low baseline cognition or mild cognitive impairment. But the effects of nicotine on people with higher baseline cognition is not that clear. And there's also the potential of bias. Personally, I have used nicotine gum every once in a while. I might use 2 milligrams of nicotine once or twice a month. If you've ever tasted nicotine gum, then you do notice the effect. It's kind of stimulating and it does, you know, subjectively speaking, increase your alertness. But I can't tell if it actually enhances my cognition, memory or my cognitive performance. 
probably because my cognitive baseline is already somewhat higher. However, we also have to talk about the downsides and potential dangers of nicotine. The first and probably the most harmful side effect of nicotine is vasoconstriction. It refers to constriction of the blood vessels, which can elevate blood pressure, promote arterial stiffness, and thus increase the risk of heart disease. However, there appears to be a dose-dependent effect for this. Acute exposure to nicotine has actually been seen to promote angiogenesis, the formation of new blood vessels. It's the chronic exposure to nicotine that has vasoconstrictive effects. And chronic exposure also damages elastin, which is a compound that maintains skin elasticity. So chronic nicotine exposure can accelerate atherosclerosis through vasoconstriction. Nicotine ingestion increases blood pressure acutely as well because it's a nervous system stimulant. Nicotine increases heart rate through the release of catecholamines. That's why nicotine use has been seen to decrease the amount of sleep people get in a dose-dependent manner, similar to caffeine or alcohol. A 2018 Cochrane review of randomized controlled trials found that nicotine replacement therapy can cause chest pain and heart palpitations, but it doesn't increase the risk of cardiovascular events like strokes, myocardial infarction, and cardiac death. When it comes to cancer, then smoking is associated with a 17,000% higher risk of lung cancer. However, nicotine itself doesn't cause cancer or increase the risk. It's smoking that does. So overall, you have to weigh all the pros and cons before using nicotine. Nicotine gums and patches are definitely healthier than vapes or regular cigarettes, but they still have some downside, especially if you use them chronically. By all means, if nicotine gum and nicotine patches keep you away from regular cigarettes, then they're net positive. But if you're not a smoker, you're not addicted to nicotine, or you're not addicted to smoking, then be careful with chronic use of nicotine gums or patches. What about other forms of oral tobacco, like the mouth patches? Over the past few decades, mouth tobacco or snooze, such as brands like Zin, have also become quite popular. You place nicotine pouches between the gums and lips, where it's absorbed into the bloodstream. A large 2021 systematic review of 53 studies done across the world found that in Asia, Middle East and Africa, mouth tobacco products were associated with higher mortality from cancers and coronary heart disease, with up to 37,000% higher risk. In European studies, there was no observed excess risk except for a few individual studies, and US studies showed mixed results. Another 2024 review claimed that oral nicotine pouches appear to be safer than regular cigarettes, and they deliver the same amount of nicotine. But a lot of the data is from industry-funded studies. So I definitely wouldn't say that oral nicotine pouches are safe. There's not enough independent studies to confirm the safety. And if you were to use nicotine, then it's probably safer to use nicotine gum or nicotine patches instead of the mouth pouches. Alright, let's sum it up. Nicotine can have some interesting effects on cognition, but most of it is probably on people with low baseline cognition. There are studies to show that nicotine helps with mild cognitive impairment, and who knows, maybe it even has benefits for some neurodegeneration. But there's little to no evidence that it would have these kind of cognitive enhancing effects in people with already normal or higher baseline cognition. Chronic nicotine use can be harmful in terms of arterial stiffness and blood pressure, which is why it's not a good idea to use nicotine all the time. If you want to know about the effects of a much safer compound called creatine on the brain, then check out this video. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.